Assalamu alaikum. In previous lecture, we talked about first uh, two solutions to resolve the problems with commutation in real uh, DC machines. Uh, in today's lecture, we shall talk about the third solution, that is the compensating windings. Compensating windings are utilized in DC machines to resolve the problems with commutation in those machines. This uh, third solution is uh, more expensive compared to these uh, first two solutions. However, its performance is superior to both of them. So let's uh, talk about these compensating windings. Uh, this figure shows uh, a DC machine uh, with a north and south pole and uh, there is an MMF due to these main poles and flux lines are depicted over here. So here are the flux lines due to main poles and when load is connected to this machine current starts flowing in the rotor windings. So let's uh, take some direction of the, this current in the rotor windings. Due to current in these windings there will be an MMF and flux lines will uh, flow due to that MMF. And these are the flux lines due to these coils and likewise flux lines due to these coils. Uh, the two magnetic fields due to interaction of the two magnetic fields that is the magnetic field due to main poles and magnetic field due to these current carrying conductors the net mag there will be a distortion in the magnetic field around the surface of the rotor. Uh, we see that at this end of the pole the MMF due to main poles and the direction of MMF due to these uh, rotor windings is the same therefore MMF will increase at this end of the pole and uh, therefore flux density will also increase. And at this end the flux density will decrease because the two MMFs are in opposite direction. Likewise for this pole MMF uh, flux lines will increase over here and it will decrease at this end. So flux distribution along the surface of the rotor is no more uh, uniform this effect is called armature reaction and we remember that there are two consequences of this armature reaction that is there is a shift in the neutral plane uh, ideally neutral plane should be over here but due to the distortion in the magnetic field this neutral plane is shifted to some new location this is the first problem and the second problem is flux weakening at this end of the pole MMF is increased at this M and MMF is decreased. Next MMF is same. However, uh, due to saturation in the magnetization curve, uh, the increase in the flux is not the same as decrease in the flux. So net flux in the machine is decreased, which is the flux weakening. So what they do is that They place uh, some coils, some conductors in the magnets as well. That is, they place some conductors over here. These conductors are placed on the magnet and uh, these conductors are supplied by the same current which flows in these conductors but now in opposite direction. Uh, this current which is flowing in these conductors, you know that can be collected uh, through the commutator and brush arrangement. So this current which is flowing in these uh, conductors uh, it can be collected from these brushes and the same current is supplied to these conductors which are placed on the permanent uh, on the magnets on the main magnets uh, but now the direction of the current is opposite. What will be its effect? These conductor, this conductor and this conductor, these are uh, very close to each other. Uh, there is an MMF due to this conductor, that is the rotor winding and MMF due to these conductors which are called compensating windings. Current, direction of current in this conductor and in this one, this is opposite. So there will be an MMF due to this conductor and an MMF due to this conductor. Both are uh, set to be uh, equal in magnitude 
and opposite in direction so that net MMF due to uh, this winding and this uh, compensating winding is zero and hence we again get a uniform flux distribution along the surface of the rotor. Rotor windings and compensating windings. There are three magnetic fields. Magnetic field due to main poles uh, and magnetic field due to current in these uh, rotor coils and magnetic field due to these compensating windings. So MMF due to compensating windings cancels out the MMF due to these rot rotor windings and then we again get only one MMF which is due to the main poles and hence flux distribution is now again uniform along the surface of the rotor and therefore uh, we get again the neutral plane is uh, at original uh, ideal location. These are two consequences of our mature reaction that is flux weakening and neutral uh, plane shift and compensating winding resolves both of the problems. Uh, there is uh, another uh, diagram which is sometimes more convenient uh, and uh, sometimes uh, more illustrative to demonstrate all these uh, effects. So let's draw that diagram as well. Uh, what we do is uh, here we have this machine, uh, DC machine. If I cut it from here and open it, that is uh, here is the machine. Uh, here is the machine with uh, some pole over here and another pole over here. If I cut this machine from here and open it, what I shall see it from the front, here is one pole, this pole, here is another pole, and here are the windings. So let's draw it in this figure. Uh, we see one pole, that is the south pole, and the north pole along the surface uh, of this machine. So this is the angle axis. So as we move along the angle, we first encounter the south pole, then ear gap, and then north pole. South pole, ear gap, and the north pole. And uh, then uh, we have the rotor windings with the direction of currents as indicated. Uh, now I plot the MMF, which is there in the machine, total MMF, uh, on, as a function of the angle. I start from here, so MMF due to the main poles, so if there is no armature reaction, this is the flux distribution along the surface of the rotor, it is uniform and uh, here uh, flux density is zero corresponding to this point, so this is the neutral plane ideally. This is the point at which flux density is equal to zero, neutral plane. Uh, when current flows in the rotor windings, there is an MMF due to these conductors as well. What we see is that at this end, uh, the MMF due to main poles is in opposite direction to the MMF due to the rotor windings. So I sketch the MMF due to rotor windings over here. Uh, at this end of the pole, the two MMFs are in opposite direction. At this end of the pole, the two MMFs are in the same direction. That is the MMF due to main poles and MMF due to the uh, rotor coils. The, that is in the same direction. And the same is the situation for the second uh, pole. So net MMF, which is there in the machine, is the sum of two MMFs. This MMF plus this MMF which is depicted uh, by this line. So this graph is roughly the sum of this graph and this graph. Uh, at this end, MMF uh, is decreased. This end, at this end, MMF is decreased. At this end of the pole, MMF is increased. And likewise, at this end of the pole, MMF is decreased and at this end, MMF is increased. Uh, we can see that neutral plane, which was originally over here, has been shifted to some new location. Uh, so, 
uh, here neutral plane is shifted and here is a phenomena of flux weakening what we do is that uh, we have uh, these rotor windings and in addition to that we uh, append compensating windings compensating windings in the poles of the machine uh, if current here is into the uh, surface of the board then here it should be out of the surface of the board and here opposite direction to the direction of current in the rotor windings so due to these conductors there will be uh, another MMF source of MMF and the current in this uh, these conductors compensating windings is adjusted such that the MMF due to these compensating windings is just equal to MMF due to rotor windings but now in opposite direction so now there are three MMFs MMF due to the main poles and uh, and MMF due to rotor windings and MMF due to compensator windings so MMF due to compensator windings is just opposite to the MMF due to rotor windings and hence these two MMFs cancel out each other effect and we are only left with the MMF which was there in the machine when there was no armature reaction that is we again get a uniform uh, flux distribution along the surface of the rotor so this uh, uh, compensating winding resolves the problem of armature reaction that is both the problem of neutral plane shift is resolved the problem of flux weakening is also resolved you remember that there was another problem associated with commutation in DC machines that problem is LDI by DT voltages which we call the inductive kickback uh, you remember the reason of these voltages we know that uh, the coils are connected to commutator segments and when brush moves from one commutator uh, segment to the next uh, one you, you know that actually these brushes are not moving rather commutator segments are moving but here I have sketched uh, just for uh, easiness that this brush has moved to this location that is previously it was in this uh, in contact with this commutator segment and now it is in uh, contact with this commutator segment and therefore uh, the direction of current in this conductor will be reversed and there will be a voltage uh, produced, uh, produced at the two ends of this coil this voltage produced is called inductive kickback so uh, can this uh, compensating winding resolve this problem the problem is clear due to uh, certain change in the current in the inductor there is a voltage across the inductor and uh, uh, so the compensating windings cannot resolve this problem uh, what they do is that in addition to these compensating windings compensating windings are uh, in the both the poles north pole as well as in the south pole uh, and what they do is they add interpoles in addition to compensating windings they add interpoles the strength of these interpoles is adjusted such that the voltage induced in this coil due to this effect VBL that is conductor moving in a magnetic field voltage is induced in it so there will be a magnetic field due to these small interpoles over here the strength is set such that voltage induced in this coil due to this effect is exactly equal to voltage that is produced in the coil due to this effect and in opposite direction both are in opposite direction so interpoles will resolve this problem uh, in summary uh, we talked about three possible solutions brush shifting uh, which uh, can to some extent uh, resolve the problem of uh, neutral plane shift however it cannot completely resolve that problem uh, flux weakening problem cannot be handled by that particular approach and uh, then we talked about interpoles interpoles resolve the problem of neutral plane shift uh, however 
uh, this cannot resolve the problem of flux weakening. This LDI by DT effect uh, we were able to resolve it by interpols. Then we talked about compensating warnings. Compensating warnings uh, resolve the problem of neutral plane shift. These also resolve the problem of flux weakening. And however, these cannot resolve the problem of these voltages. So in more expensive machines, they have both uh, compensating warnings and interpols. Compensating warnings to resolve this effect and interpols to resolve this effect.